Welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash radiodetectives. Today's program is brought to you in part by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis using the Zell app to box13 at greatdetectives.net or become one of our ongoing Patreon supporters for as little as $2 per month, just go to patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now it's time for this week's episode of The Man Called X. The original air date is February 19th, 1952. And the title is Hey Penny Stamp. <laughs> Listen to Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Wherever there is mystery, adventure, intrigue, in all the strange and dangerous places of the world, there you will find the man called X. From the oil fields of Iran to the fertile delta of the Nile, the smoldering coals of ancient hatreds, of militant nationalism, threatened to burst into a fiery inferno that could well be the start of World War III. And who would there be to say whether such a flaming holocaust came into being accidentally or was deliberately ignited as a weapon of destruction aimed at the Western democracies? Time is 9.45 p.m. The place, a dark crooked alleyway near the dock area of Cairo. The furtive figure of a man moves cautiously, hesitatingly, through the black enveloping shadows of the Egyptian night. Oh. Oh. Why do I do these things anyway? A guy could get his throat cut out here, and for what? A few measly bucks. Believe me, if it wasn't for that, I'd never do it. Where is Uncle Ahmed anyways? He, he said he'd meet me here. Where is he? Where is Cousin Ismail? Oh, where is anybody? Right behind <laughs> the fender. Who? Oh, oh, Uncle Ahmed. It's so dark for a minute. I thought you were somebody else. Oh. <gasps> you, you are somebody else. Quiet, Zell Schmidt. <laughs> that is the blade of a knife you feel pressing against your throat. It... It is. Listen. There is a certain man aboard the British cruiser Hellenic... Out in the harbor, a certain Pasha can thirst him. He must board the Cairo Port Said Express at midnight, compartment C3. With him, he must have 100,000 pounds sterling. Repeat that. The Cairo Port Said Express, midnight, compartment C3. 100,000 pounds sterling? You will see that he is there with the money. Otherwise, your life will be forfeit. But but what if he don't want to go? He will go, Zell Schmidt. When you tell him that with the 100,000 pounds, he will be able to purchase a half-penny stamp. This story of Zellschmidt sounds rather like a weirdy, doesn't it, Ken? Could be a trap, you know. I doubt it, Jim. I have a hunch Pagan and his uncle Ahmed could help us out on this. I think they've done it. Well, Zellschmidt said this knife-wielding character did mention a halfpenny stamp, but <laughs> is it the one we're after? Well, it has to be. What other stamp could possibly be worth 100,000 pounds? Yes, 20 times that if it contains the data we want. Then how are we to find out? Easy. I'll be aboard the Cairo Port Said Express at midnight. Mm. Might take a bit of doing. The Egyptians are very partial to us at this moment, you know. I'll, um, I'll do a bit of disguise, change clothes, go, go as an Egyptian merchant. <laughs> and I'll wager your throat's cut before you leave the station. I'll let you know how I come out. Oh, no, no, hold on, Ken. You might be decent enough to wait until I got my hat. I'm going with you. Sure. 
sure this is the right car, Kim? Yeah, well, it's compartment C5 and C4. Here we are, C3. Come in, please, gentlemen. Come in. There's more than enough room for all of us. Who are you? My name is Turos, gentlemen. Dimetro Turos. This happens to be a private compartment, Mr. Turos. Or didn't you know? Oh, yes, yes. I was quite aware of that fact. I have been waiting for you, Mr. Thurston, and for Commander Stevens. Well, how do you know who we are? I have connections, sir, but that is not important now. What is? The fact, sir, that I am a philatelist, a stamp collector, and my reason for being here is the same as yours, a certain halfpenny stamp. What stamp is there? Gentlemen, some five years ago, a British intelligence agent managed to infiltrate into a certain organization... A Middle East Strategy Committee, whose orders came from a city which might well be called Moscow. Am I correct, Commander Stevens? You were saying something about a stamp, Mr. Turos. Yes. That agent managed to acquire quite a fund of information about this committee, such as its concern with the Iranian oil situation, its interest in the anti-British riots in Egypt, and he inscribed it all, every fact, name, place... Upon the back of a hippony stamp. Oh, come now, Turos. One could hardly write a phone number on the back of a stamp, let alone all that data you're mentioning. As you know, the agent was a specially trained calligrapher, one who could inscribe the Lord's Prayer on the head of a pin. So? The agent was arrested by the committee and murdered. The stamp disappeared. It is now somewhere in Egypt, avidly being sought by Russian agents, by British agents, by certain Arabian potentates. And by Dimitro Turos. Yes, as you say, Mr. Thurston, by Demetro Turos. What's your interest in it? Strictly financial. That stamp is worth a great deal of money to the interested parties I have mentioned. Here, one of my cards. I trust you will visit me one day soon at my home in Port Said. Thank you, gentlemen. Good night. Well, now what you make of that, Ken... One thing's for sure, our friend Turos is well informed about that hate in the stamp. But he's not the man we came to meet. Oh, uh, what makes you think that? Those bloodstains on the carpet. Bloodstains on the... Yes. Right next to that window seat. Huh? What in the world? There's luggage space under that seat. Let's take a look. Right yes, Indeed. You think he was the man we were going to meet? Yes. And then who slipped that knife into him? Turos? Could be. Then Turos must have the stamp. I doubt it. Why? He would try to make a deal with us all. He would claim he entered the compartment by accident. And it must be somebody else aboard the train. It would be anybody. Yeah. May we come in, gentlemen? No, oh, you're in. What do you want? I am Major Osman Kamal, Egyptian military police. The men in the corridor are my agents. Do not attempt resistance, please. What's your interest in us? The corpse under that seat makes the answer superfluous. However, you are both under arrest for murder. Raise your hands, please. Ken, Raise I... them. Better do as he says, Jim. Uh, After all, it makes it easier to reach the emergency call. Not for that offense. They do not... Get the door, Jim. I've got it. What about the Major? Knocked off his feet. I'll make sure he stays that way. <laughs> uh, touch of genius, Ken, pulling an emergency cord. There's certainly no time to mess around with a murder charge, but where do we go from here? Port Said. Port Said? With the stamps aboard this train, that's where it's headed. The window, Jim. We'll get out that way. Come on! Lovely city, Port Said. Despite the trouble we had getting here. Yeah. Though I must confess I don't feel one bit closer to that stamp. That's why I want to visit our friend, Demetro Turos. He's the only lead we have. Yes, well... Uh... According to the address on his card, this should be his home. Yeah. You go on and contact your agents in town. See if they've learned anything. I'll talk to Turos here and we'll meet at the El Akbar Hotel tonight. Right. Hello, 
Hello, Mr. Thurston. Welcome to Port Said. Well, I'll be... And surprised to see me, eh, Mr. X? I should have known you were aboard that train last night. <laughs> what did you do? See Toros leave that compartment and follow him here? That's right. Only stood to reason you'd be showing up here, too. So when the tourist character left the house, <laughs> I got in. Yeah. How long have you been here? Only a couple of minutes, Mr. X. Nobody else in the house? No, not a soul. Well, <laughs> what do we do now? Look for a hate in this stamp. The one worth a hundred thousand pounds. Sterling? Yeah. Now that looks like a den or library over there. Let's try it. Hey, it's, it's blacker in here than my aunt Zenobia's heart. There's a lamp on this desk. Yeah. <gasps> hey. Ah, some joint, eh, Mr. X? Must be plenty of dough in this damn business. And look at that painting of that cute cookie dancing. <whistles> We're interested in stamps, not dancing girls. Remember? Oh, sure, sure, sure. So, <laughs> where, do, where do we start, Mr. X? I suppose we, uh, we try those albums on this desk. Hey, look at those books. All covered with leather and stuff. Artificial diamonds and stuff. Oh, those diamonds are real, Peg, huh? Oh, sure. <laughs> I knew it all the time. Would they ever put diamonds on a book? That was real. That's right. Then... What are we waiting for? Let's grab those books and scrum out of here. Oh, shut up. Hmm? Find something, Strix? Take a look at this page. What's that to look at? Just stamps. Hapenist stamps. Hey, hey, maybe one of them's that... uh, The one that Joker said you should meet him on the train so you could pay him off and and it's worth almost a half a million bucks? Yeah. Let's check them. But... But how are you going to do that, Mr. X? What are you going to look for? There are little plastic envelopes. We can see both sides. Look for writing on the back. Writing? Or what kind of writing? Uh, uh, any kind of writing. Just... Uh... <sighs> My eyes. Something is the matter with... There you go. Mr. X, <laughs> sleepy and sleepy. The lamp of smoke is very coming up from the lamp. Drug, being drugged. Got to get out of here. Oh, oh. sure, Mr. X. Got to get... Oh. Hey, get up. Get the lamp. Drugs coming from the lamp. Got to... I got to turn it out. We'll return to the man called X in just a moment. Countries like people have their economic ups and downs. And like people, the countries that cut to the roots of their problems with the greatest ease progress the farthest and the fastest. Our own country has become the envy of the world in this respect. And why? Because the better we produce, the better we live. Throughout our history, living conditions have been geared to productivity, improving with industry's vast strides, bringing shorter work hours, more leisure time, and greater well-being to us. And American production has taken place in a setting of liberty, the liberty to work where one desires, to profit from initiative and enterprise. The American way has brought more benefits to more people than any other system in the world. So that's what we mean when we say, the better we produce, the better we live. And now, Act Two of The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, with Leon Belasco as Pagan Zellschmidt. It is only a little colored piece of paper, a hoppenny stamp, But on its back, it contains information that could quench the rising flames of unrest in the Middle East. Or could lead to World War III. And now, Ken Thurston is in Port Said, Egypt, searching for the stamp in the home of Dimitro Turos. A search that is suddenly terminated when he and Pagan come under the influence of some strange drug. Uh, uh, uh. So, Thurston, attend You are regaining consciousness at last. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah, looks as though. Huh? Uh, who are you? I am known as Erdry. Does the name mean anything to you? That 
picture on the wall in Turo's library. The dancing girl. Oh, I am flattered that you recognize me, Effendi. Uh, Peon, where's, where's Peon? Your companion is sleeping comfortably in the cabin next to this one. Uh, uh, so we're aboard ship. The Abdullah Bay, anchored in the harbor of Port Said. It is my husband's yacht. Husband? You have already met him. The Metro Toros. That is quite correct. Why bring me here? Is it so difficult to fathom, Effendi? We are all after the same thing. The halfpenny stamp. No, it still doesn't make sense. Unless... You working with your husband, Audrey, or against him? The Metro is a pig. Does that answer you? It gives me a general idea, yeah. Well, then let me give you more specific ones. On the port side waterfront, there is a cafe known as the Star of Heaven. Tonight, in the Star of Heaven, you may be able to find the happy stamp that you seek. That's interesting. Anything else? I understand it will be in the custody of one I have heard referred to only as the man with the third green eye. <laughs> well, not very enlightening, is it? It will have to do. I have told you all that I know. Yes, but why? I wish that stamp to be in the hands of its rightful owners, not in the metros. And I intend to make certain of that personally. Oh, how? If you succeed in obtaining the stamp, you will come back here to the yacht with it. Why should I come back? There are two men wanted for a murder committed aboard the Cairo Portside Express. A certain Major Osman Kemal is in Port Said at this very moment. He might well be interested in the whereabouts of one of those men. Mm -hmm. Not very subtle about your threats, eh? There is nothing very subtle about war, Thurston Effendi. Well? I'll try to be back tonight. <laughs> These characters would cut your throat for nothing, even less, maybe. Why don't we give this place a couple of quick powders? No, not until we find the things we're looking for. What things? A hapenny stamp. A man with a third green eye. I don't know what kind of talk is that. Uh, pardon, Ooh. Effendi, is your order. For you, Effendi, best coffee. Black tea and hot. Thank you. And for you, Effendi, halib. Milk. Pure and sweet from the cow. Milk? But I ordered a triple scotch. I changed the order. What do we owe you, waiter? Nothing offended. It has been paid for. How do you like that? First free loading I get in six months and I went up with milk. Mighty nice, waiter. Who arranged it? The proprietor, Abdul Hafiz Ben. Hafiz Ben? Yeah, that is he standing near the rear door. Hey, Mr. Thurston, that Hafiz Ben joker. He's yeah, the... Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank him for us, waiter. And uh, here for you. Oh, a thousand thanks, Effendi. May the blessing of Allah... But Mr. X, look at that Havisbund guy. At what sort of turban he's wearing. I see it, Pagan. A brilliant green emerald. Sure, and it's sitting almost in the middle of his forehead. A guy with a couple of drinks or two under his belt could even think maybe it was... Uh, it was... A, a third green eye, Mr. Zellschmidt? That's right, a third green... Hmm? That a guess, Taurus? Or do you know? I know... I can assure you that Abdul Hafizban is the man with the third green eye. And the man who has the stamp? Quite nice of you to invite me so cordially to join your table, gentlemen. The gun you've got inside that napkin says we haven't much choice. Quite right, Mr. Thurston. Though it is only 22 caliber, it would be quite deadly if aimed properly. <laughs> well, sir, shall we indulge in some friendly conversation regarding a happy stamp? You must realize by now that I want it, sir. Want it very badly. And before this evening is out, I shall possess it. Then why waste time with me? My dear sir, it is hardly a waste of time to remove the last obstacle from one's path. <laughs> you will notice that the band is playing louder. The music will shortly reach a pitch where the sound of two shots muffled in this napkin will go entirely unnoticed. Just like that, eh? Just like that, sir. Well, at least it's time for me to finish this coffee. My fish! My fish! Let's have that gun, Toros. I will kill you, Thurston. Let's have it, Toros. I will. Oh, oh Mr. Thurston! 
Come on, that rear door. Yeah, but where are we going? We've got a date, Pagon. The man with the third green eye. But why do we still hang around these joints, Mr. X? The rest of those jokers will be after us any minute. Office Ben's still got that halfpenny stamp. And you think he's back here somewhere? He's got to have an office someplace. Maybe this is it. <gasps> oh, Mr. X. Yes. Oh, but but who? Why? Take a look at his turban. Mr. X. The emerald. The third green eye. Yes. Missing. <laughs> So the man with the third green eye is dead, the first on a Sunday. And the halfpenny stamp is missing once again. Looks like it, Audrey. Ah, this is too bad. But at least there is one consolation. Demetra did not get his filthy hands on it. Yeah. Well, I've kept my promise. Might as well be going. Well, well, Major. And you remember me, first on a Sunday? Sure. Looks like you pulled a neat double cross, Audrey. Perhaps it would not have been necessary if you had returned with the halfpenny stump, Thurston FND. So you're in on this, too. What about that military police gag? Merely a subterfuge to question you and Commander James Stevens at leisure. Circumstances prevented that aboard the train. Nothing shall prevent it now. What do you think you'll find out from me? The present whereabouts of the stamp. You think I'm the one who killed Havis Ben and took the stamp from him? No other explanation will fit the circumstances. Major Cabal, start questioning him. He will tell us where it is hidden quickly enough. Oh, you don't have to bother. I'll tell you where it is. But I want to get something straight first. Huh? What? As I see it, Havis Ben spread the word that he'd sell the stamp to the highest bidder. And the vulture started gathering around. Two of us who had the money to buy it. And the two of you who sent me to the cafe... To get it for you. So? But you didn't figure that one of you would double-cross the other. What do you mean? While Turos and I kept each other busy, one of you killed Huffy's Ben and took the stamp. Didn't you, Audrey? What? You're lying. Better not wear such spicy perfume. The scent was still in Huffy's Ben's office. Now, where's the emerald? The one that's got the stamp concealed inside. In your purse? No. No, no, stay away from there. No. Okay, Major. It's your move. So, you did double-cross me, Audrey. I should have known. No, Osman. For the way that gun. You can't shoot me. You can't. I am going to... Is everything okay, Ken? It's under control, Jim. Thanks. You heard everything? I didn't miss a word. All very exciting at the end there, and I must say we've run up against as unsavory a character of crew of characters that's ever been my misfortune to meet. Who are you to talk, you filthy capitalistic pigs? Someday we will prove to the world who the truly superior peoples are. Oh, sure. You're certainly trying hard enough. Using the double cross, murder, even war. Or maybe someday you'll learn that there are no superior people. Only a couple of billion human beings who want to live together in peace. Who pray they won't have to fight to get it. Now, here's our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Thanks for being with us. And my thanks to Lucille Meredith, John Dana, Ed Begley, John Stevenson, and Lou Krugman. Next week, South America. The basin of the Orinoco River, where, believe it or not, a ton of dynamite and one Pagon Zellschmidt produce an explosion that threatens the whole country. Pagon? Leon Belasco, of course. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. <laughs> The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall, is a J. Richard Kennedy production with music by Milton Charles. Tonight's story was written by Sidney Marshall. This program is directed by Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents on this program are fictitious, 
and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. And now, until next week, same time and station, this is Hal Gibney saying good night for The Man Called X. This is NBC, the national... Welcome back. Well, definitely an exciting episode. Just a whole lot of great uh, spy action. Classic stuff from stopping the train. And then you have the uh, poison gas coming out and... And the excitement with the coffee. Uh, these scripts, you know, they've got less running time, but they really do make uh, as much as they can out of what they have. This also is an interesting time for them to be in Egypt because the country was in a, a lot of tension and was uh, a little more than five months away from the July 23rd revolution that saw the overthrow of the monarchy. This was supported by both the U.S. and the Soviets uh, against the U.K. So sometimes the geopolitical situation can be a little bit more complicated than uh, the details in The Man Called X. Well, I do want to go ahead now and thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to Joshua, Patreon supporter since last June, currently supporting the program at the shameless level of $4 or more per month. Well, that will do it for today. If you are enjoying this uh, podcast, please be sure to rate and review it wherever you download your podcast from. Next Wednesday, we'll be back with another episode of The Man Called X, but coming up tomorrow, we have an episode of Philo Vance, where... You know, Sydney, if I ever needed any assurance of my success, your being here asking for a job would do the trick. What about the job, Edith? You'd better get used to calling me Miss Payne. You remember my last name, don't you? I remember everything about you. How you came to my shop, this same shop, five years ago, and asked me for a job. And how I gave it to you. Yes, yes you did. As a stock clerk. Twelve dollars a week. With a chance for advancement. You certainly advanced. And quickly. Hmm. Before I knew it, I was depending on you for everything. And then one day, I found you had control of my business. That won't happen again, Sidney. The other way around, I mean. All right, you start as a stock clerk for $12 a week. And no chance for advancement. Want the job? It is... Nobody can say I don't remember my friend. Oh, excuse me, friend. Miss Payne speaking. This is Tom Henderson, Miss Payne. Oh, yes, Mr. Henderson. I own the Paris Import Dress Shop on Fifth Avenue. I know. What can I do for you? I'll tell you what you can do. You can stop sending those snoopers of yours over to my store to sketch my import so you can make them up cheaper. That's what you can do. Uh, so far as I've been able to find out, there are no copyrights on designs, Mr. Henderson. And besides... My designers just happen to think of the same models which you go to the expense of importing. Is that all? No, it isn't all. My business has been cut in half. I'm on the verge of bankruptcy because of your unethical tactics. You're going to have to stop, or I'll find a way to stop you. That is all. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives. And uh, check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.